Lily Rose lesson is to eat dirt to help your friendly bacteria. <laughs> Did she just put that down my top? Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Rowe. Today's video has been inspired by Lily Rowe. I've been watching what she gets up to. I've been observing her as she grows and develops. And I think babies have got a lot to teach us about what it is to be human. So this is the first video in what I hope might become a series little lessons from Lily Rowe <laughs> and they're things that I think would also be useful messages for us to hear as forest school leaders as well because so much of what we do out in the woods with learners is about human growth and development so here we go it's the first one see what you think <laughs> So the first lesson inspired by Lily Bow is to eat dirt or sticks or perhaps other things that you find on the forest floor. Perhaps not an unusual behaviour for a baby, putting things in their mouths. After all, that's how they make sense of the world, through their mouths at this age. However, it can be a behaviour that as parents and practitioners can feel a bit uncomfortable to allow young children to do this. We live in a very hyper sanitized world now compared to our ancestors. And perhaps some people are worried about germs being out here and you know, the germs that you can pick up through playing with soil and muds and sticks. And perhaps that's a fear that you've come across from the parents of the learners at your forest school. Perhaps they're worried about their child getting muddy or wet or exploring the earth, the mini beasts, the bugs that they might come across. And sometimes these anxieties from the adults can be passed down to the children. So you might also have learners themselves that are worried about mud. They don't want to put their hands in the mud. They don't want to explore the sensations of the earth. They don't want to walk barefoot. Of course, part of our role as a forest school leader is to make sure we don't expose our learners to unreasonable levels of serious harm. So we need to manage the risks appropriately. But we do that by looking at the benefits of doing something as well as just the potential harm that could come from uh, something going wrong, perhaps. If you want to explore this idea further, then I have made a more detailed video about risk. I'll pop the link in the description below. So let's just put that into practice for this particular issue of Lily putting things from the forest floor into her mouth and let's balance the benefits and the risks. So this is how I see it as a parent and as a practitioner. So let's look at the benefits. Firstly, there are the physical development benefits of picking up items, manipulating them, coordinating them. When they're in her mouth, practicing moving There's something happening in the trees above. Oh, squirrels. Oh, squirrels playing tag. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, lost my thread completely because of the exciting squirrels playing chase. Um, physical development physical development. So yes, so when she's got things in her mouth, then she's practicing moving those jaw muscles, her tongues pushing things out of her mouth, moving stuff around her mouth. Um, obviously really important for developing um, good eating practices as in the ability to push stuff out of your mouth rather than it going to the back of your mouth and choking. Um, and also for speech as well, you know, those jaw muscles and tongue muscles are what will help you form sounds and words and sentences eventually. So there's those physical benefits. But the main benefit and the reason predominantly why I let her pick things up on the forest floor and put them in her mouth is for bacterial benefits, friendly bacteria benefits. 
So apparently we're not human, apparently, <laughs> or at least we're not just human. So apparently we're at least half, some people say 90% bacterial, if you count the number of cells that make up a human body. Uh, if you look at that from a DNA point of view, we are 99% bacterial DNA compared to 1% human DNA. So we are a whole ecosystem of microbes that live in various parts of our body, like the skin, like our guts. So apparently about a thousand species of bacteria will live in our gut, in our digestive system. And these are healthy, friendly bacteria that help us function um, and are really important to our human health and well-being. So these bacteria will help us digest our food. They also synthesize certain vitamins like some of the B vitamins and vitamin K. They're also responsible for synthesizing like hormone type substances even some of like the neurotransmitter type chemicals that help us oh dear, <laughs> help us feel good in our brains are, are linked to gut bacteria they also communicate with different systems in the body such as our immune system so they are really important having good communities of gut bacteria this is a new area of science as I understand it. So there's been lots and lots of research in this, um, in, in medicine and in other sciences, to the extent of them starting to look at bacteria's role in some chronic illnesses. And so uh, lack of healthy bacterial communities or the colonization of the wrong sort of bacteria in your gut has been linked to all sorts of things from asthma, obesity, uh, diabetes, autism, depression, anxiety, all of these kind of more chronic, some of the autoimmune diseases as well have been linked. So these chronic, uh, what we've called lifestyle uh, illnesses, uh, some scientists are finding links with gut bacteria and not having the right type of gut bacteria or not having enough of the healthy gut bacteria. So gut bacteria is obviously really, really handy. And guess where? There's a lot of bacteria living. <laughs> That's right, in the soil, bubs, in the soil. And also, apparently, in the first two years of life, it's particularly important to have exposure to certain healthy bacteria to colonize the gut uh, efficiently for the rest of life. So again, while she's little, I figured it's important that she does get exposed to all sorts of things so that that um, hopefully will colonize her gut so she'll have a healthy gut biome. <laughs> So then to balance the argument, let's consider some of the risks. So the way I see it, there are three very, very serious risks that are on my radar. The first is if she was to put something in her mouth that was poisonous, severely poisonous, that could cause her a lot of harm. The second is if she was to put poo or something contaminated with poo into her mouth because that could have high levels of uh, not so friendly bacteria like E. coli or Salmonella or Toxicara. Um, and then the third one is if she put something in her mouth and it was a choking hazard and she was to choke on it. So those are the three things that are on my risk assessment radar. Um, there are, of course, other possible harms like getting splinters or small scratches in the mouth, but I've judged those to be less serious. Uh, still unpleasant, but less serious because they're not life-threatening. So as a parent, I implement a control action, which is basically to kind of keep an eye on what she's putting in her mouth and monitoring it. Um, and so particularly if she puts um, green leaves, as in fresh leaves, she has a tendency to pick flowers and plants off the ground as well. So I'm there looking at what species she's picking and making sure that they're not toxic species. Um, of course, there are lots of things in the woods that are edible and so that's fine. I let her explore that. I'll even let her swallow those things if they're, you know, fresh green leaves. Uh, you know, a nice tasty beech leaf is, uh, is a springtime treat. <laughs> um, 
then in terms of if there's poo or choking hazards, same thing really, just check what she's putting in her mouth. Big long sticks like this I don't consider um, a choking hazard. Um, however, if they're very crumbly, they might break up into smaller pieces. So I do tend to watch for that. Usually something a bit thicker, a bit chunkier is more fun, isn't it, as well? But I chew on that uh, more easily. So basically my control action is to watch what she puts in her mouth. Of course this does throw to light the importance as parents uh, and as for school practitioners to know what you have in your environment. So I'm only able to make the judgment about whether uh, she can put a species into her mouth and eat it or not is because I know what is poisonous and I recognise those species. So there is also an element here about extending our own knowledge and understanding so that we're better place to make value judgments around risks such as eating soil. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that little lesson from Lily Row and that it explains some of my decision making around risk as a parent. Of course as a forest school practitioner you will need to do your own risk benefit analysis if you are letting young children put things in their mouths or experience the mud and the soil. If you do have nervous parents, maybe some of the information about the friendly gut bacteria and how important that is for our health might be useful information to share with them. Um, I have found the sort of drip feeding key information about the benefits of different things outside to be quite useful when you've got more concerned parents. I'll pop some links in the description below to things that I found useful as well. Have you come across any other benefits or tips about getting muddy or experiencing soil? Do let me know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel so that you can join us again in the woods next time and thanks for watching. Lily Rose lesson is to eat dirt to help your gut bacteria get to work. Getting nice and muddy is the key for immune boosting fun the next time you head to the trees.